between stimulus and response lies what choice you have to be response able so you are not responsible for the situation that occurred but you can choose how do you respond to the situation and i sell fruits i sell fruits i say every day unceasingly to the point where the fruits pay me more than men i get when men are lecturer and if i were to be honest i don't know if my wife is watching this but i went to saint james for woman i don't know how to say this the relationship didn't work out crystal but I've failed my way to the relationship that I am in now. And it's the best relationship ever. You see, the person who works hard beat the person who is talented any day. But get, look at this. You see, when you combine talent plus hard work, mercy. For you yet, the person who you owe the most money, the business, the company, you can raise your hand and share because we're not here to judge. Debt is a part of the phases of wealth creation. Were we not told? We're not afraid of debt. We're not afraid of debt. Who is your big... Yeah, go ahead. You take. What's your name? Yannick. You take a gazelle. deliver this presentation I'm sure in effervescent style is Mr. Lowenfield Alain he's a business executive and he is head of the TCS total credit service inside the JN group again I feel like there's such great alignment in the room today in terms of the financial service providers who are sharing insight because JN is also known before JN was a bank it was a building society and it was also known for that same approach turning back no customer we're gonna find a financial instrument a financial pathway a roadmap to get you from where you are to a position of wealth so whether your business have a bank account it don't matter come in we'll show you how to get it started whether or not you have some kind of cash management you don't worry yourself you come on in and we'll show you how to get this done to the point where JN became synonymous with home ownership one of the best assets you can amass on your journey to wealth creation and we heard it in Carleen's presentation so joining us today is a gentleman with 19 plus years of guiding diverse teams across the Caribbean South America and India he's renowned for driving business growth while nurturing a culture of talent development and change excellence he seamlessly transitions businesses from onshore to near shore locations with exceptional client net promoter scores. He's a committed advocate for causes such as autism awareness, championing the Jamaica global services sector and spearheading local community development. So it's not just money, it's about building muscle in all sectors of our society. Ladies and gentlemen, to walk us through the design of a Victor's Roadmap, please make welcome Mr. Lonefield Alain. Good morning, rock stars. Why the morning sound weak? We need to get some coffee and some tea and some beverages around the, around the table. Good morning, rock stars. All right, all right, all right. I like it. Any, any, any winners in the house? Any victors in the house? Oh, they, they, we have the table right here. And I, I, I need to focus my attention over here, you know. They, but, but we are all winners. And I want to... My presentation this morning is geared towards if you're not yet a winner, if you're not sure that if you're a winner, by the end here today, you're going to be a victor. Home is on. Huh? That's exactly what we're gonna we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be doing this morning. I, I heard Crystal, you know, a, a lot of us would have been to church this morning or yesterday, but I, I like how the presence of the Lord is here. Amen. What a beautiful prayer we had this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love the, I love the prayer. But Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to them that and those that are called according to his purpose. So let me start off this way. If I were to say, let's go have a drink of vanilla. Who's with me? Let's go have some vanilla. No, vanilla. We're having vanilla. You know vanilla, the extract, vanilla. Let's go have a drink of vanilla. Who's with me? 
not a soul, not even one person have a drink of vanilla. But nobody would drink vanilla. I, I've tasted vanilla because I like to do a little bit of baking. So, you know, I put vanilla in, 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 in my thing. And vanilla tastes disgusting. It's, it's one of the most disgusting tastes you ever... Anybody ever tasted vanilla? Yeah, you know, it tastes good. Doesn't taste good. Doesn't taste good. But here's the thing, though. If you put vanilla in pastry, if you put vanilla in some punch and, and some drinks and so on, my God, what a... What a smell, what an aroma. It just lifts everything. Now, where is Lowenfield going with all of this? Sometimes we have what I call our vanilla moments. In the moment, it makes absolutely no sense. Why did I lose a spouse? Why was I in this motor vehicle accident? Why did I lose my job? Why did I? You think about the moment. In the moment, it makes absolutely no sense. But if you were to take a 30,000 foot view and start to look down on what is happening here and start to connect the dots, then the vanilla will say, oh, that is really what was going on. All right, I'll share with you. Let me, let me come a little bit closer to you. So I'm originally from Manchester. Spent, spent the majority of my professional career in St. James, though. And if I were to be honest, I don't know if my wife is watching this, but I went to St. James for woman. I've been honest. I followed a girl to St. James, like most men do. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see late dodging. So, so I went to St. James, and I don't know how to say this. The relationship didn't work out, Krista. But I failed my way to the relationship that I am in now. And it's the best relationship ever. Well, on my son, I am saying, don't worry about the failures that you will have. They are just some vanilla moments. And you're failing your way to your victory. You, you get where I'm going? So don't, don't, don't look at the moment in and of itself and say, boy, oh, it never worked out and whatever. It never worked out because God is pushing you in another direction. Yeah? Anyways, that sermon will come here for preach today. So, so look at this clip here. So two persons are here looking at the same thing. Yeah? But look at the perspectives. Starting in frame one. I must be doing this wrong. Notice the other person. They made this wrong. Next frame. I must have missed the instructions. They wrote the instructions wrong. I must have lost some pieces. They left out some pieces. Why can't you ever blame the responsible party? I must have been out of my mind inviting him. She's out of her mind. What's going on here? What's the difference between these two people? Raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. I have things to give away. Boy, you know, I look a bit biased. I, I think I saw somewhere over here before. I can't, yes, let, 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 let my good friend who did the prayer. The difference is um, she's taking accountability and he isn't. She's taking accountability. It deserves $20, not true? Yes, yes, yes. She's taking accountability and, she, and the other person isn't. And can I tell you, that's the difference between being a victor and a victim. All right? We're moving on. What always fascinates me is that you would meet the same in two individuals from the same community, yeah? And then one person would have made it and then another person would have just given up. And I often wonder what's the difference between the two individuals, right? It, it's not a case that one was of means and the other wasn't. Both of them were equal as far as the things are concerned, but yet one person was able to make it and the other hasn't. All right, I have to, I have to move on because I have to make good use, of my, good use of my time. But we have to, situations will come into our lives that are sometimes outside of our control. Yes? 
the death of a spouse. Maybe outside of your country. But here's the thing. You have to be responsible. Between stimulus and response lies choice. Write it down. Between stimulus and response lies what? Choice. You have to be responsible. So you are not responsible for the situation that occurred, but you can choose how do you respond to the situation. That's the difference between being a victim and being a victor. Yeah? We're going to try to move on. All right. It's not working. So who is a victim? A victim is one that renders him or herself powerless in situations where the outcome is not as desired. So you, you didn't arrive at the outcome you wanted, so as a result you start to blame. Because it must be somebody else, you know, it couldn't be me. It must be somebody else. Look at this. Anybody knows this, this song? It was me. It was me. It must have been somebody else. A victim, write this down, will always claim innocence i am not guilty all right persons here's a, here's a famous one i'm late because there was traffic you ever hear it i was late that there because there was traffic i work in kingston there is traffic every single day that is oh, that, that's there every day there is traffic so so what do you do knowing that there is there is going to be traffic all right let me come to the business people now i am late to this meeting because i was stuck in another meeting so the meeting kind of just grabbed me crystal. I couldn't escape and they hold me, hold me, hold me. I was stuck. I mean, I get sucked in. Because you, you didn't have any control of leaving the meeting. I was stuck in another meeting. So I am not, it's not because of me, you know. It's the meeting. Blame the meeting. Like you couldn't did log out a little bit before, five minutes or whatever, so that you can make the way on time for the other meeting. So the point that I'm making here is that a victim will always do what? Claim innocence third point next point oh is me have control no a victim is always impotent and don't don't get this in the wrong context no i mean that a victim will always surrender power to something or someone else so that's where the potency is lacking right so a victim is always impotent and a victim is always innocent all right now help me real quick we're gonna run run through some of these i'm gonna share with you some victim perspectives and i want you to convert them to victor's perspective work with me number one if they just do something about my pay i would work harder this is what the victim says so the reason i'm not working any other because the people are not paying me enough how do you reframe this from a victor's perspective? Show of hand and get me a mic, please. Please, mic, mic, mic. Anybody, somebody? All right. So, so we, we, we have a hand over here. How do you reframe this? If I work harder, then my pay will increase. Hmm, okay. All right. Very good try. Anybody else? Somebody else? I want you to reframe this. And it does not necessarily mean rearranging the words that are there. I want you to to arrest control in this particular situation. What does control sound like here? Go ahead. What can I do? Ah, that is a victor's mindset. What can I do differently? It's, it's one of my biggest peeves. Trust me. I work in the BPO sector and I'm proud of BPO. Anybody else proud of BPO? All right, so, so here's my thing. People always focus at the entry level and oh, entry level don't pay an entry level. You name the industry that the entry level people earn whole heap of money. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Talk to me. I'm not hearing any. So entry level, you know, make no money. But nobody goes in in order to stay at the entry level. You follow where I'm going? But we miss so many opportunities. We miss so many. I, my recipe for my growth, and I see a couple of my mentors in here, is I support the hell out of ever anybody who is leading me. If it's my boss, then when you come on to all appraisal time, Crystal, me are the easiest appraisal for you. You understand what I'm saying? 
when when it, when it come up to problem employee find one ex employee because that's an low end field if if the if the if the if the manager need to take some time off from work they not then good because guess what low end field have control only if you understand what i'm saying so i have led most times when i'm promoted people say but you name that already no i just got here point is understand where you are support your leader support your leader and then the growth will come all right i have to move on i'm struggling in this course because the teacher is the worst reframe reframe oh, oh sorry yes go ahead and, and i'll take one more and then i'll move on go ahead i must finish this course so i don't care about the teacher i will go to youtube if i have to all right all right that's one perspective thank you give her a hand give her a hand one more one more my friend here one more So learning is my own responsibility as well. I will take the necessary steps to learn what the teacher is not teaching. All right, thank you very much. That's it. Is is who is who want the certificate at the end of the day? Is who want the degree? You think it's the teacher? The teacher already qualified. So you need to do everything in your power to make sure that you're successful. The teacher could have poured a little more. I don't care. I just want to make sure that I get a good grade. All right. So there are a few more here that you can work on in your own time. Um, I hate working in groups. People are too lazy and I end up doing the work. That's one. Next one. My spouse made me so angry. No, I can't even concentrate on work. Anybody can make you angry? Can anybody make you angry? Last one. Oh, I talk about the traffic before. The traffic was so heavy that um, I'm late for work. All right, we're moving on. So we're going to look at some head-to-head -head now. Victor versus victim. What are some of the things victims say versus how a victor would say? It? I told you before, victors are impotent, right? They're poor. Victims are impotent. They're powerless. So a victim will say, I'm terrible at this. A victor will say, I find this challenging. So let me do some research and design a strategy. A victim will say, this job is a dead end job. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. Thank you. It makes no sense. So you're surrendering control. You shouldn't surrender control. What you should do is take control. So look at it. This job is a dead end job. It makes no sense. What does the victor say? The victor says, there are some elements about this job that I don't understand. I'm not, I'm not saying that the victor should be What's the word I'm, I'm looking for now? Um, no, no, the, 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 the term I'm looking for is so, there are some people who are just, you know, them, them head in the clouds and not in touch with reality. Yes, clueless. Uh, you know, there are some people who just, yes, it's overly optimistic. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that's what you need to do because the reality is going to be in front of you, right? So it's okay to say I don't understand or you don't understand yet because that's really what stands between you and understanding, you know, it's just a passage of time. So you, 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 you don't understand yet. I am not skilled at this thing yet. Uh, that, you know, when we look at, I think talent is overrated. Yeah, I might be the only person who says that. You see, the person who works hard beat the person who is talented any day. But get, look at this. You see, when you combine talent plus hard work, mercy. That's, that's it. That is it. So it's okay to not understand. Ask more questions. The measure of one's intelligence is not by the answers they give, but by the questions that they ask. It takes nothing to give a response. You have to think about asking a question. Ask better questions. Victims have things happen to them. I've met so many people. Oh, they forced me to get married. And they forced me to get baptized. And they forced me to take the job. And they forced me. You, 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 meet, you meet any of these kind of people? They never take responsibility for nothing yet. Hmm? It's always somebody that forces them. I keep getting these poor scores because my leader doesn't like me. So we, you might be in appraisal time now you get a bad grade on your appraisal and it's nothing you did, you know. It's the boss. It's the boss. It could never be me. Me? No, sir. Victors make things happen. 
folks, I got a two on my appraisal one time. Yes, auditor, when I was at when I was at Xerox, I got a two. Got a two. Let me tell you the story real quick about me too. So I joined the organization as an assistant manager. They promoted the manager, Edward. A year after I started, they promoted the manager. And they never backfilled the assistant manager position. So you know, in that following year, everything will happen because I never have no assistant manager. Everything will happen. I blame the assistant manager role for everything. You see, this is not done because I don't have an assistant. You guys didn't give me an assistant. I don't, I don't expect it to go happen. I remember my boss at the time, and she pulled me. It was the most difficult discussion because she said, Oh, she tells somebody like low end fields and get a two. Come in, do two. You know what she said? Me and two not in the same kind of lean at all. Me, not, me not a two person. You understand? Me allergic to mediocrity. That is not my thing. You get what I mean? So, so I got a two, Krista. And I went into the meeting and she told me I, I got a two. Can I tell you that was the best appraisal discussion I've had? Because it gave me a wake up call. The next year, guess how much me get? 4.5. Did I get an assistant? Not at all. But you know, say out of the meeting, me go and me call, call one meeting and me go through and me say, okay, Edward, you are doing this. You, you are doing this, you are doing this. And you see, the next year, we're the most successful team. What changed? My attitude changed. My mentality changed. I was no longer having things happen to me. I was taking control. Take control. All right. Victims crumble under hardship. I'll probably fail. There is nothing I can do. Why bother? What does the victor do? The victor triumphs in trials. I will find a way. There is always something I can do. Always something that I can do. And then lastly, victims blame. The leader is cruel. He should not have given me. Uh, he, should, he could have given me a pass. He didn't have to write this memo to me. Yeah? Some people try to write on them friendship, you know. Them, them come and them say, all right. You know, I'm... Um, you know, me late this morning, but you know, me and my are friends. She, she. Hello, folks. I worked with my wife. I've worked with my wife probably for about eight years of my professional career. And trust me, she's the hardest person to work with because you see, if the deadline is Sunday, my deadline is Saturday. If it is if it is noon, mine is 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. You know why? Because she cannot afford for anybody to look and say because you know we're. No, no, no. So my friends in, 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 in thing are the hardest people on me. And so it should be. Don't give nobody no passes. Yeah? That's how this thing works. As we move on. Victors accept responsibility. I got the memo. I didn't follow the policy. I'll make a plan to guide my improvements in the area. My final slide. My final slide. I want to share with you eight steps to make sure that you're a victor. Eight steps. First one is repeat affirmations. Believe in yourself. See, the books that, that are there in, the, in your bag, there are some books that are here. Repeat some affirmations. You can if you think you can. Look in your bag, there are some, there are some books in each of the bags. Repeat affirmations, that's number one. Number two, transform your setbacks into comebacks. All of us are traversing life. Life is life as I hear somebody say. And life is going to do nothing but be life. That's what life is about. So don't come, you know, all... Because life happens to everybody. If I were to pass the mic around, everybody have a different story. I told you a couple of mine. Everybody has a different story. So, so what? What are you going to do? Yeah? So make sure you transform your setbacks into comebacks. I can't say this one enough. Practice gratitude practice gratitude i have learned in whatever state i am there with to be content and content and happiness is not the same thing content means that i am satisfied with what i have yes that's what it is it doesn't mean that you don't aspire to get more or to or, or, or to or to have you know abundantly you understand but you should be content next Think about what you're thinking. Most times why you're stuck in terms of where you are is because the, think, the thoughts that you're thinking. Arrest your thinking. 
because your thinking actually leads into actions and stuff and you have to you have to go to the root and the root is from where you start to think yeah think about what you're thinking embrace what's the word response ability not responsibility but response ability you are always response able between stimulus and response lies thank you very much design empowering goals Kylie spoke about goals but those goals must be empowering right why do I want to acquire the things that I acquire why do I want to get this degree the, the degree then <laughs> I, I did ACCA as my professional qualification yes I did ACCA and the reason I did ACC is because accounts like me, not because I like accounts. You know, there are some things that just come naturally to you. So accounts like me. So I did. I did accounts. But sometimes, as I learned in, 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 in doing my ACC, for those of you who did your degrees and so on, you know, kudos to you and stuff, because you're working for your 100 and you want to get your honors and so on. What I learned in ACC, 50 is good enough. And if you get more than 50, you work too hard. No, I didn't. Allow me to tell my my I, I had a tutor and if, if you get 60 he said no you have a problem here you spend too much time on this because guess what you're not married you don't have son you don't have all of these things that you need to do why do you need to get more than 50 i will show you how to get 50 and you don't need no more than 50. point that i'm making sometimes i see graduation going on now at utec utec is my alma mater right but sometimes we focus too much emphasis on these degrees and understand that this is just a rite of passage to something else. Focus on the other thing. Don't worship these qualifications. They mean absolutely nothing. You understand? You're just doing it because people, I, you, you know, we do come, I did common entrance back in the day. Like, I don't know what you call now. What you call now? Pep? Pep. Yeah, it can't pass G said at Odetta. See Odetta in the past. You reach a Pep now. But we are celebrating because all you need to do is to just get to know if you're going to high school high school it's just a rite of passage to the next phase stop focusing on the qualification i know my time is running grow you must grow a tree grows every year it shed leaf it put on new leaf if it's if it's not growing vertically it's growing hard some growth must have take place continuously work on yourself yeah all the time and then lastly celebrate progress don't be too consumed in the goals that you are trying to achieve that you know you don't you don't you don't stop to smell the roses celebrate progress my final video i have just this if last the lion video is the I king of the share. jungle how can he be the king of the jungle if he's not the biggest the elephant is probably one of the biggest he can't be the fastest because that's a cheetah. He can't be the smartest. So he's not the biggest, the fastest, or the smartest. So how does a lion become the king of the jungle? His mentality. That's the only difference of a lion and an elephant. When a lion walks up and sees an elephant, he thinks lunch. An elephant thinks run. And it's all mentality. Because when a male lion walks up, he may be outnumbered by a pack of hyenas, but I'm king of my jungle because of my mentality. What happens when you're a gazelle and you're not being pushed? You're not being prodded. You're not giving it a reward. Nobody's encouraging you. What happens when you're a gazelle and the lion's not chasing you anymore? You stop running. But what happens when you're a lion? When you're a lion, it does not make a difference. You realize that if your family is going to eat, that if that pack of lions is to survive, then you gotta go hunt. A part of being a beast just ain't eating a gazelle. A part of being a beast is the hunts.
It's the hunt that they're excited about. They like to see the gazelles run. Then boom, they take off. Because real lions like to hunt. They love the process just as much as they love the prize. And some of y'all just want to score. You don't like the process. You're not in love with the process. A true hunter's goal is not the prize. A true hunter's goal is to hunt. That's what they live for. They live to hunt. They don't just live to catch it. It's the whole process. When you are a true hunter, you don't go by time, you go by the gazelle. When you are a true hunter, you hunt until you get a gazelle, and you don't stop until you get one. And then you get another, and then you get another, and you get another. If you're going to do what you say you're going to do, be what you say you're going to be, you're going to have to lie me out. You're a gazelle, you're going to come up short. You're a gazelle, you're going to have an average experience. You're a student, I need you in lion mode. You're an entrepreneur, I need you in lion mode. You try to lose weight, lion mode. You can't do nothing significant in gazelle mode, nothing. Nothing impressive happens in gazelle mode. Nothing happens in run mode, give up mode, quit mode, scared mode, fearful mode, nothing happens. Everything happened in lion mode like I'm coming to get you. Everything happens in lion mode. We're not gazelles in here. And for us, the hunt is more important than the prize. Yeah? Be in lion mode. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Lowenfield, Elaine, ladies and gentlemen, we can't do much better than that. It gotta sound like you're in lion mode celebrating the hunt meeting a fellow lion looking at the gazelle what's the name of your biggest creditor it's like got the person who you owe money is the creditor right the name of your biggest creditor just think about them the name come up for you yet the person who you owe the most money the business the company you can raise your hand and share because we're not here to judge debt is a part of the phases of wealth creation were we not told we're not afraid of debt we're not afraid of debt who is your big yeah go ahead you take What's your name? Yannick, you take a gazelle. You take a gazelle. You're gonna run that down and eat that in no time, right? What's the name of your what this table? Come on, have a win something and make that table go on too much knowing no man. Come tell me right here. BNS is your biggest gazelle. Bank of Nova Scotia. Gazelle. Mortgage department. Mortgage department. Gazelle. We're gonna chase that down and eat that in no time. Well, I'm a lioness and I got my student loan, which is English pound. Jesus. You see me? And I'm 60% nearly, I'm 60% through okay. actually getting to clearing the balance. Does that make sense? So yeah. I'll save 60%. So, 40 so is in left. four months' time, I would have cleared £9,000. See, our gazelle only have two foot left. a lioness. You right? see me? She catch oh. the gazelle already, and the gazelle only have two foot left. It's dead. What do we have here, sir? What's the name of the biggest creditor here, sir? Ed, you come. We can tell you, say, me, you have the biggest creditor too. I just see him one me of. Gazelle it name. Gazelle it name. And we're going to run it down and catch it. Let's start up and come to this table now. I have a special thing for the back table. You see, sometimes they think they're at the back and them get away. When they don't get away. What's your, what's your biggest creditor? First Caribbean. First Caribbean. And you know it's a gazelle, right? When you see the email, they are coming, the little reminder, them, the little text message, don't make them frighten you. It's a gazelle. And we're here to hunt. We're hunting the opportunities. We're excited by the chase. Them calling down your phone, your heart a beat. We're excited by the chase. Because it's not just the prize. It's the process of overcoming that struggle, that challenge, that thing that feels overwhelming. Don't make it frighten you because we have a strategy to get into lion mode. Give me the biggest roar you're having in your belly please listen i really really enjoyed listening to mr Allen share about how to get into lion mode and ladies and gentlemen we're pausing for a coffee break but i don't want you to lose the momentum all right so before we go for the coffee break i do have a giveaway i'm inviting somebody to come and share and then we're going to give a presentation to our speaker I want somebody to come and share for me their vanilla moment. And maybe you didn't know it was a vanilla moment until you got the perspective a while ago from Mr. Alain. But that thing that by itself in isolation, it just bitter and tastes bad. But in context, when you mix it up with some other life experiences, when you give it the benefit of time to put it into perspective, you realize there's just a little vanilla in the banana bread. 
It's just a little vanilla because how would I be? It's a nice, nice bread. If I never did get the tooks of vanilla three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, yesterday morning, right? Sometimes it's just perspective. Who is willing to share with me their vanilla moment? I see a hand here, a hand. I'm looking for a new hand, you know. But if your if your hand is up, anybody else who hasn't shared yet? Share yet? No? This is your first time sharing? All right. I'm going to take you. And remember to tell us your name. Morning. Hi, I'm Sonika Jerry. So, I did an MBA, right? And if you've done an MBA, it will broke you. Yeah, I had no money when I finished. And I used to lecture when I was doing the MBA, very fancy job. And we did this MBA, and then I went to foreign. To say I'm going to get a big work now with this big degree behind me, right? I got to foreign, get a work, almost got deported. I mean, never have no work permit so I could have been a deportee right I was so disappointed I come back to Jamaica now and nobody would hire me because everybody said them can't pay me people called me for an interview and the interview was about the MBA when we do oh my god I've never met anybody with a master's and I can't pay you but I just wanted to ask you about your experience I'ma just take my last thousand dollar pay a bus fare if you come do this interview, right? And that went on for a year. And I got as pregnant I had a baby when I came back, right? So you know me not have no money. Thank God for savings and planning, right? So I live for my savings for one year. And you know some me I fret as as so worried. And one day it was raining. And I happened to pass by the hospital and I said to myself, say, well, on, people of a hospital, sick people want fruits, right? And I go down at the market, I bought a melon, some mango, some pineapples, and I made some fruit cups. And the next morning, I threw them in my car back and I walk out south. That time I'd lived in Westmoreland. And I became the fruit lady. And every morning at 3 o'clock, I got up and I made my fruit cups. I went out downtown Sav, walk out Sav, and sell fruits to the point where I had my fruit cups in the supermarkets in, in Sav. And I sell fruits, I sell fruits, I sell every day unceasingly to the point where the fruits pay me more than men I get when men are lecturer. I walk and sell. And remember, walking up and down on a fancy job, I'm not dressed nicely like when you're going to a lecture theatre to lecture. Nobody now call me Miss Jerry. People just call me Fruits Lady, Fruits Lady, Fruitsy, Fruitsy. And if I wasn't almost deported, I wouldn't have been able to change my perspective to realize that anything, everything is good enough. Anywhere you bend, you turn, you twist, as long as your perspective is on growth and ensuring that your family is well taken care of, you will do anything once you have that victim mentality, Mr. Allen. I wasn't a victim. I could have come and sit down and blame everything except myself. But what? I figured out a way to make it happen. All of us have that innate mentality in us that's why we're here today we're all victors we are not victims Lord, uh, Lord, 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 because that is a testimony and we do have a, a gift for you so i remember oh 50 dollars hello hello so you can have a seat your concierge Stasia, your concierge, Miss Jerry, is going to bring it over to you. But I'm so inspired to hear her story, and I can tell from the response in the room, so are we. I'm going to invite Mr. Elaine again to our lectern, or podium, I'm sorry, to receive a token of appreciation for his presentation. We are fully charged and ready to go. And just before the coffee break, as we make good on this presentation, I'm going to alert the team. I told we're going to do a little bit of restructuring. So, whenever you're ready, so are we. <laughs> 